Hello my darlings, today I'm delivering to you another Darby story. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike and comment something down below. Sharing the video is also very, very, very important. It's uh, getting actually more important by the month. Uh, it's hard to explain. Essentially the algorithm is getting worse. But while we are talking about the algorithm, what I just told you is actually how you get me a better stand in YouTube algorithm. So uh, if you could do that, I would be eternally grateful to you. Um, also, what you could do to help me would be drawing fan art. Uh, I'm even okay with Rule 34 fan art. Just, uh, you know, do anything, please. Help a guy out. The amount of comments that tell me that I'm underrated are growing ever more while the overall overall views are declining, which is actually a weird paradox. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed writing it. And let's get right into it, shall we? In a world where most people had superpowers, many chose to be heroes. But just as many, if not more, chose to be villains. Of course, there were the people who were in a moral grey area, some of whom tend to be praised by edgy people and sometimes even the media. An example for these special kinds of people was the hero killer Stain. Even though his reign of terror lasted only a few weeks, he managed to both kill and incapacitate many beloved heroes. And after an internet video revealed his message to the world, a lot of people chose to doubt. You were one of these people. Because after seeing the video, heroes just appeared in a different light to you. But all this did not lead you on the path you were on now. The reason why you became the villain you were now was your boyfriend. Darby. Just Darby. He never gave you his last name. The man was a bad boy through and through. Black leather jacket, scars that were just scary enough to be both menacing and cool, and a gruff voice that made you quiver with excitement whenever you heard it whisper in your ear. At first, you didn't know he was a villain. To you, he was just edgy. At least, that's how he appeared to you. And he himself had to admit, the relationship with you began as something to use as an alibi. But the more time he spent with you, the more he realized how much he truly cared about you, which was highly dangerous in his line of work. The ugly truth of his life was revealed to you one late evening. You had woken up from a nap, feeling quite hungry, and with a clouded mind you had slumped into your kitchen. Scrambled eggs were the only thing you could think of, but just when you cracked the first egg and were about to pour the liquid into the already sizzling pan, the unmistakable noise of a finger knocking on glass caught your attention. Not expecting much, you looked over and shrieked. The face of your boyfriend, bloody and bruised, was grinning at you from outside your kitchen window. Your brain immediately went on autopilot. Walking you over and letting Darby inside, the man immediately collapsed on your floor and grunted. What happened to you? You croaked in concern. Ugh, he snarled. Slittle scuffle. You stepped behind him and dragged him by his armpits onto your living room couch. Your apartment was thankfully small. You could still barely afford it, though. Thank God it came with furniture. Otherwise, you would have to sit on wooden boxes. Gently, you laid him down. You're 
You're a med student, right? He said with a pained grimace. Yes. But I think it would be better if you go to a hospital. He shook his head. Ah. Two. Two. He was heaving from the pain. Too dangerous. He raised an eyebrow skeptically. But after looking him over one more time, you gave in. I, I get my first aid kit. You sighed. Moments later, you were kneeling on the floor next to him, carefully cleaning his wounds. Mostly shallow cuts and bruises. Huh. His right arm was dislocated. What fun. You weren't a surgeon, and even though you were a med student, you were just trying to become a nurse. Why was this now happening to you? Uh, take your clothes off, you said while preparing a sterile needle and thread. <laughs> if you want to see me naked, all you need to do is ask. The death glare you gave in response almost made him yelp. Almost. You should be glad I like you. A lot. Was the only answer you gave him. You helped him out of his damaged and bloody clothes. Luckily his chest had no deep lacerations, but some of his wounds did need stitches. Overall, the entire process took two agonizing hours. Worst of all, halfway through you really needed to pee. But for him, you suppressed the urge. While you were using the bathroom, he admired your work. For shorty backyard surgery like this, you did a great job. While he did think you overdid it on the bandages, he already felt better. He was still in overwhelming pain that any lesser man would cry over, but better nonetheless. So, what happened to you? You shouted from your bathroom, and he chuckled in amusement. <laughs> Do we really have to shout it at each other like that? He said loudly. What? Came your answer. He sighed, and leaned himself further into your sofa. Four minutes later, you sat down on your coffee table next to him. With crossed arms and a judgmental look, you glared at him. <sighs> okay. He gave up. Remember how we met? He asked cautiously. Yes, and the Camino Ward Mall. You smiled at the memory. We both reached for a can of soda and our hands touched. He nodded, almost eagerly. Yeah, and how I said, my mom told me that you meet your soulmate not by searching, but by pure accident. Sighing happily, you closed your eyes and replied, and then I said, that's a weird way of starting a conversation. You both started laughing for a moment before he continued, like a kicked puppy he spoke. Well, that was a lie. As you probably have guessed by now. Admittedly, I... I just found you hot. You bit your lower lip in frustration, but you decided not to interrupt him. Thing is, I just needed a story. You furred your brows, and he helplessly shrugged. Look, I'm a villain, alright? One of the bad guys? He chuckled dismissively. <laughs> the bad boy, if you will. Anger rose inside you. You even shed a single tear. So, all this was nothing to you? Seeing how this hurt you, he immediately changed his carefree demeanor. No, 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 no. He sat up straight, exhaling sharply from the pain. But he was determined to show you that he was being serious. No, he huffed. I mean it. It became serious. 
And I'm sorry for deceiving you. You're right, I twitched for a moment. So what now? You barked at him. He gave you a questioning look. You just expect me to accept it? To sit here waiting for you only to then see you being arrested on the news? Or worse? You scrunched your teeth. Not to mention this. As you call it, deception. Every word you spoke made you angrier. Honestly, yes. Your eyes turned to slits. Choose your next words wisely. He sighed. You knew I would tell you something like this. If not a villain, then an anti-hero. Both are bad guys in the eyes of heroes, the media and the politicians. Yet you still stitched me up. When I told you I'm not going to the hospital, it's too dangerous, you made the active choice of being okay with it. Especially with what I told you just now. You scoffed but didn't reply. I'm right, aren't I? You still said nothing. Okay, fine. Kick me out then. Say it. Say it and I'm gone. He snickered darkly. <laughs> it's rare I offer something like that. What were you thinking? How about I make this a little more sweet to you? You glance at his face. Right into his perfect blue eyes. My group needs a doctor. Well, we do have someone like that, but... I mean more active. A medic. Yeah, that's the right word. Someone who asked what you just did to me on the fly. And what's in for me? You asked, sounding way too curious. All of our assets. Uh, well, the ones you would need, of course. You'd, well, stay my girlfriend. If you want, that is. And a pay bigger than what you make with your little student job. We have places to stay, like our current base of operation is a log cabin in the woods outside the city. You chuckled. You had seen a movie once about a doctor working for the criminal underworld. And you couldn't help but wonder how realistic that movie would be in comparison to the real thing. You smirked. And your boss is just okay with you throwing around job offers for random girls. Or what? Dobby shrugged and you scoffed. For now you were done with him. Without saying another word, you retreated back into your kitchen. The puddle of blood he left behind was still soiling the floor. If it had been for you, he might have died from his wounds. Either through blood loss or infection. You sighed, more out of desperation and pity than anything else, really. After a minute of collecting yourself, you poked your head through the kitchen door. Fine, I'm in. But I get to choose my villain name. Javi laughed. <laughs> oh my god, I love you, babe. He certainly made the right choice when he chose to fall in love with you.